This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Ted McElroy, Austin, Texas. Aesop's Fables The Man and the Image a poor man had a wooden image of a god to which he used to pray daily for riches. He did this for a long time, but remained as poor as ever, till one day he caught up the image in disgust and hurled it with all his strength against the wall. The force of the blow split open the head, and a quantity of gold coins fell out upon the floor. The man gathered them up greedily and said, "'Oh, you old fraud, you!' When I honored you, you did me no good whatever. But no sooner do I treat you to insults and violence than you make a rich man of me. End of The Man and the Image This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas, Dunkelberg.com, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G.com. Aesop's Fables, Hercules and the Wagoneer. A wagoneer was driving his team along a muddy lane with a full load behind them when the wheels of his wagon sank so deep in the mire that no efforts of his horses could move them. As he stood there, looking helplessly on, and calling loudly at intervals upon Hercules for assistance, the god himself appeared and said to him, Put your shoulder to the wheel, man, and goad on your horses, and then... You may call on Hercules to assist you. If you won't lift a finger to help yourself, you can't expect Hercules or anyone else to come to your aid. Heaven helps those who help themselves. End of Hercules and the Wagoneer This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas. Dunkelberg.com Aesop's Fables The Pomegranate, the Apple Tree, and the Bramble A pomegranate and an apple tree were disputing about the quality of their fruits, and each claimed that its own was the better of the two. High words passed between them, and a violent quarrel was imminent. When a bramble impudently poked its head out of a neighboring hedge and said, There, that's enough, my friends. Don't let us quarrel. End of The Pomegranate, The Apple Tree, and The Bramble This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas. Dunkelberg dot com. D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G. Aesop's Fables. The Lion, the Bear, and the Fox. A lion and a bear were fighting for possession of a kid, which they both had seized at the same moment. The battle was long and fierce, and at length both of them were exhausted and lay upon the ground, severely wounded and gasping for breath. A fox had all the time been prowling around and watching the fight. And when he saw the combatants lying there too weak to move, he slipped in, and seized the kid and ran off with it. They looked on helplessly, 
and one said to the other, Here, we've been mauling each other all this while, and no one the better for it except the fox. End of The Lion, the Bear, and the Fox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X, dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas. Dunkelberg, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G, dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Blackamoor. A man once bought an Ethiopian slave, who had a black skin like all Ethiopians. But his new master thought his color was due to his late owner's having neglected him, and that all he wanted was a good scrubbing. So he set to work with plenty of soap and hot water, and rubbed away at him with a will. But all to no purpose for his skin remained as black as ever, while the poor wretch all but died from the cold he caught. End of The Blackamoor This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X, dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas. Dunkelberg, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G, dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Two Soldiers and the Robber Two soldiers traveling together were set upon by a robber. One of them ran away. But the other stood his ground, and laid about him so lustily with his sword, that the robber was fain to fly and leave him in peace. When the coast was clear, the timid one ran back, and flourishing his weapon cried in a threatening voice, "'Where is he? Let me get at him, and I'll soon let him know whom he's got to deal with.' But the other replied, you are a little late, my friend. I only wish you had backed me up just now, even if you had done no more than speak, for I should have been encouraged, believing your words to be true. As it is, calm yourself and put up your sword. There is no further use for it. You may delude others into thinking you're as brave as a lion, but I know that at the first sign of danger, you run away like a hare. End of The Two Soldiers and the Robber This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg. Dunkelberg.com, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Lion and the Wild Ass A lion and a wild ass went out hunting together. The latter was to run down the prey by his superior speed, and the former would then come up and dispatch it. They met with great success, and when it came to sharing the spoil, the lion divided it all into three equal portions. "'I will take the first, said he, "'because I am king of the beasts. "'I will also take the second, "'because as your partner I am entitled to half of what remains. "'And as for the third, well, uh, unless you give it up to me, and take yourself off pretty quick, the third, believe me, will make you feel very sorry for yourself. Might makes right. End of The Lion and the Wild Ass 
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L I B R I V O X dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg. Dunkelberg, D U N K E L B E R G dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Man and the Satyr. A man and a satyr became friends, and determined to live together. All went well for a while, until one day, in winter time, the satyr saw the man blowing on his hands. "'Why do you do that?' he asked. "'To warm my hands,' said the man. That same day, when they sat down to supper together, they each had a steaming hot bowl of porridge. And the man raised his bowl to his mouth, and blew on it. "'Why do you do that?' asked the satyr. "'To cool my porridge,' said the man. The satyr got up from the table. "'Good-bye,' said he. "'I'm going. I can't be friends with a man who blows hot and cold with the same breath.'" End of The Man and the Satyr This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg. Dunkelberg, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Image Seller. A certain man made a wooden image of Mercury and exposed it for sale in the market. As no one offered to buy it, however, he thought he would try to attract a purchaser by proclaiming the virtues of the image. So he cried up and down the market, A god for sale! A god for sale! One who'll bring you luck and keep you lucky! Presently, one of the bystanders stopped him and said, If your god is all you make him out to be, how is it you don't keep him and make the most of him yourself? I'll tell you why, replied he. He brings gain, it is true, but he takes his time about it, whereas I want my money at once. End of The Image Seller This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg. Dunkelberg, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Eagle and the Arrow An eagle sat perched on a lofty rock, keeping a sharp lookout for prey. A huntsman, concealed in a cleft of the mountain and on the watch for game, spied him there and shot an arrow at him. The shaft struck him full in the breast and pierced him through and through as he lay in the agonies of death. He turned his eyes upon the arrow. Ah, cruel fate, he cried, that I should perish thus. But, oh, fate more cruel still, that the arrow which kills me should be winged with an eagle's feathers. End of The Eagle and the Arrow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg. Dunkelberg.com, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Rich Man and the Tanner A rich man took up his residence next door to a tanner, and found the smell of the tan-yard so extremely unpleasant that he told him he must go. The tanner delayed his departure, and the rich man had to speak to him several times about it. And every time the tanner said he was making arrangements to move very shortly. 
This went on for some time. Till at last, the rich man got so used to the smell that he ceased to mind it, and troubled the tanner with his objections no more. End of The Rich Man and the Tanner This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber. Aesop's Fables The Wolf, the Mother, and Her Child A hungry wolf was prowling about in search of food. By and by, attracted by the cries of a child, he came to a cottage. As he crouched beneath the window, he heard the mother say to the child, Stop crying, do, or I'll throw you to the wolf. Thinking she really meant what she said, he waited there a long time in the expectation of satisfying his hunger. In the evening, he heard the mother fondling her child and saying, If the naughty wolf comes, he shan't get my little one. Daddy will kill him. The wolf got up in much disgust and walked away. As for the people in that house, he said to himself, you can't believe a word they say. End of The Wolf, The Mother, and Her Child This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber. Aesop's Fables The Old Woman and the Wine Jar An old woman picked up an empty wine jar, which had once contained a rare and costly wine, and which still retained some traces of its exquisite bouquet. She raised it to her nose and sniffed at it again and again. Ah, she cried, how delicious must have been the liquid which has left behind so ravishing a smell. The End of the Old Woman and the Wine Jar This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanonasasa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Lioness and the Vixen A lioness and a vixen were talking together about their young, as mothers will, and saying how healthy and well-grown they were, and what beautiful coats they had, and how they were the image of their parents. "'My litter of cubs is a joy to see,' said the fox. Then she added, rather maliciously, "'But I notice you never have more than one.' "'No,' said the lioness grimly, "'but that one's a lion. "'Quality, not quantity.'" End of The Lioness and the Vixen This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanonasasa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Viper and the File A viper entered a carpenter's shop, and went from one to another of the tools, begging for something to eat. Among the rest, he addressed himself to the file, and asked for the favor of a meal. The file replied in a tone of pitying contempt, "'What a simpleton you must be, if you imagine you will get anything from me, who invariably take from every one, and never give anything in return. The covetous are poor givers.'" This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanonasasa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Cat and the Cock A cat pounced on a cock, and cast about for some good excuse for making a meal of him. For cats don't as a rule eat cocks, and she knew she ought not to. At last, she said, 
You make a great nuisance of yourself at night by crowing and keeping people awake. So I am going to make an end of you. But the cock defended himself by saying that he crowed in order that men might wake up and set about the day's work in good time, and that they really couldn't very well do without him. That may be, said the cat, but whether they can or not, I'm not going without my dinner. And she killed and ate him. The want of a good excuse never kept a villain from crime. End of the cat and the cock. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Henry Fregon. Spaceman3000.blogspot.com Aesop's Fables The Hare and the Tortoise by Aesop A hare was one day making fun of a tortoise for being so slow upon his feet. Wait a bit, said the tortoise, I'll run a race with you, and I'll wager that I win. Oh well, replied the hare, who was much amused at the idea, let's try and see. And it was soon agreed that the fox should set a course for them, and be the judge. When it came time, both started off together, but the hare was soon so far ahead that he thought he might as well have a rest, so down he lay and fell fast asleep. Meanwhile, the tortoise kept plodding along and in time reached the goal. At last, the hare woke up with a start and dashed on the, at his fastest, only to find that the tortoise had already won the race. Slow and steady wins the race. End of The Hare and the Tortoise Read on February thirteenth, two 2006 in Oceanside, California. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas, Dunkelberg.com. Aesop's Fables, The Soldier and His Horse A soldier gave his horse a plentiful supply of oats in time of war, and tended him with the utmost care, for he wished him to be strong to endure the hardships of the field, and swift to bear his master, when need arose, out of the reach of danger. But when the war was over, he employed him on all sorts of drudgery, bestowing but little attention upon him, and giving him, moreover, nothing but chaff to eat. The time came when war broke out again, and the soldier saddled and bridled his horse, and, having put on his heavy coat of mail, mounted him to ride off and take the field. But the poor, half-starved beast sank down under his weight, and said to his rider, "'You will have to go into battle on foot this time. Thanks to hard work and bad food, you have turned me from a horse into an ass, and you cannot, in a moment, turn me back again into a horse. End of The Soldier and His Horse This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas, Dunkelberg.com. Aesop's Fables, The Oxen and the Butchers Once upon a time, the oxen determined to be revenged upon the butchers for the havoc they wrought in their ranks, and plotted to put them to death on a given day. They were all gathered together discussing how best to carry out the plan, and the more violent of them were engaged in sharpening their horns for the fray. When an old ox got up upon his feet and said, my brothers, you have good reason, I know, to hate these butchers. But at any rate, they understand their trade, 
and do what they have to do without causing unnecessary pain. But if we kill them, others who have no experience will be set to slaughter us and will by their bungling inflict great sufferings upon us. For you may be sure that, even though all the butchers perish, mankind will never go without their beef. End of The Oxen and the Butchers This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas, Dunkelberg dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Wolf and the Lion A wolf stole a lamb from the flock and was carrying it off to devour it at his leisure when he met a lion who took his prey away from him and walked off with it. He dared not resist, but when the lion had gone some distance, he said, "'It is most unjust of you to take what's mine away from me like that.' The lion laughed and, and called out in reply, "'It was justly yours, no doubt.' The gift of a friend, perhaps, eh? End of The Wolf and the Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables the sheep, the wolf, and the stag. A stag once asked a sheep to lend him a measure of wheat, saying that his friend the wolf would be his surety. The sheep, however, was afraid that they meant to cheat her, so she excused herself, saying, The wolf is in the habit of seizing what he wants and running off with it without paying, and you too can run much faster than I. So how shall I be able to come up with either of you when the debt falls due? Two blacks do not make a white. End of The Sheep, The Wolf, and The Stag This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Lion and the Three Bulls Three bulls were grazing in a meadow, and were watched by a lion, who longed to capture and devour them, but who felt that he was no match for the three so long as they kept together. So he began by false whispers and malicious hints to foment jealousies and distrust among them. This stratagem succeeded so well that ere long the bulls grew cold and unfriendly, and finally avoided each other and fed each one by himself apart. No sooner did the lion see this than he fell upon them one by one and killed them in turn. The quarrels of friends are the opportunities of foes. End of The Lion and the Three Bulls this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg in Fort Worth, Texas. Dunkelberg, D-U-N-K-E-L-B-E-R-G dot com. Aesop's Fables, The Horse and His Rider. A young man who fancied himself something of a horseman mounted a horse which had not been properly broken in, and was exceedingly difficult to control. No sooner did the horse feel his weight in the saddle than he bolted, and nothing would stop him. 
A friend of the riders met him in the road and in his headlong career and called out, Where are you off to in such a hurry? To which he, pointing to the horse, replied, I have no idea. Ask him. End of The Horse and His Rider This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Lee Dunkelberg, Fort Worth, Texas. Dunkelberg.com Aesop's Fables, The Goat and the Vine A goat was straying in a vineyard, and began to browse on the tender shoots of a vine, which bore several fine bunches of grapes. "'What have I done to you?' said the vine. "'That you should harm me thus. "'Isn't there grass enough for you to feed on? "'All the same, even if you eat up every leaf I have "'and leave me quite bare, "'I shall produce wine enough to pour over you.' when you were led to the altar to be sacrificed. End of The Goat and the Vine This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Venona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables the two pots. Two pots, one of earthenware and the other of brass, were carried away down a river in flood. The brazen pot urged his companion to keep close by his side, and he would protect him. The other thanked him, but begged him not to come near him on any account. For that, he said, is just what I am most afraid of. One touch from you, and I should be broken in pieces. Equals make the best friends. End of the two pots.